Hi there, happy Friday. It is Susan Beyer with Fun With Research. Glad you joined me today. Um, today we're gonna talk about a question that I've received about uh, survey question order. Are there rules to the order in which you put survey questions? So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Some of this may be more relevant for longer surveys than for shorter ones, but they're all things that you should really think about. So I'm gonna talk about four things today. The first one is just survey fatigue. It's a real thing. If you're dragging people through a lot of stuff, and especially if it's very repetitive, it can be uh, fatiguing. Some questions, uh, for example, a yes or no answer to a question are fairly easy to uh, answer in terms of the investment of concentration and time that it takes. Other things like rating or ranking questions, especially with multiple items, can be uh, a bigger investment. And open-ended questions where people have to think and then create an answer and type it in uh, can often be fairly draining, fatiguing to clients. So you wanna make sure that your survey isn't piling a whole bunch of really sort of high investment questions one after the other. Um, if respondents see that, especially early in a survey when they're just getting started and page after page has 15 things for them to rate, um, they're probably gonna be out, right? So you just have to recognize that um, you need to sort of maintain a pace in your industry, in your uh, survey that your respondent is gonna be comfortable with. So some things are gonna be harder, some things are easier, but if they've just invested in uh, a bunch of ratings, you may wanna give them a break and have some easy questions about uh, their demographics or yes or no answers or stuff like that. So fatigue is one thing you need to think about. Uh, avoiding confusion is another. Let's say you're doing a B2B survey and some of the questions are about the respondent themselves and some are about the organization they work for. Um, if you're switching back and forth, that can become confusing for people because maybe they say, wait, wh which are we talking about right now? I just had a question about me and now I have a question about my company and now I'm back to, back to me again. Um, it can also create confusion if you have a format for a question, let's say you have five things for people to rate, and you repeat that same format multiple times in a row, sometimes people, because it looks almost exactly the same on the page, think, wait, I already answered this, didn't they get my answer, why are they showing me this question again? Uh, so that can become confusing. So you wanna make sure that people understand that when they've moved forward in a survey, they've moved forward and aren't sort of stuck on the same page, so that can happen. Um, importance of your questions uh, to your organization of the answers you're getting is also something to consider, especially if you have longer surveys. Uh, there may be people who drop out at some point. And what you need to consider is, are there things that are extremely important for you to capture? If so, you wanna try to front load those perhaps. Um, if you're able to, so that even people who maybe drop out of the survey at least answered those questions. Now, that doesn't mean you can put eight 15 item rating questions one after another at the beginning of a survey because then you have a fatigue problem and a confusion problem and it's gonna mess you up. Uh, but if there are things that are more important in your survey than others, you might wanna front load them. Um, just a warning though, if there are things that really aren't that important that you're pushing to the back, I would argue that you should think about whether they are important at all for that survey and maybe they can be pulled out, make your survey a little more um, respondent friendly. So importance is something to think about. And then the last thing you wanna think about is bias. Um, a lot of surveys have questions that could potentially influence someone's answer on another question if they saw the, the other question first, right? So. Um, for example, if you're doing a survey where you're not mentioning the name of your organization or of your client, you're asking sort of general questions, um, and you don't want people to know who's asking until later in the survey, then by necessity you need to put those questions sort of towards the end. Um, if you're gonna ask questions about messaging or the importance of certain things that you are thinking about doing or that are the hallmark of your organization, once again, you need to consider whether asking those before you ask people what's important generally could influence their answers. So you need to think about whether a question that you wanna put first or second or third in your survey will bias the responses that you're gonna to get to other questions that you have. 
Um, so you sort of need to think about that. So does question order matter? It does matter. It matters for a lot of different reasons. There is no hard and fast rule about what you do. You really need to think about the respondents, uh, the topics you're exploring, the length of your survey, uh, and what we've talked about here, uh, fatigue, uh, avoiding confusion, the importance of various questions if people aren't going to complete the whole thing, uh, and uh, the introduction of bias when you think about question order. Um, if you're working with a researcher, they should be able to work through all of these things with you. If not, and you have questions, I'm happy to answer them, but hopefully you've got an idea of the kinds of things to consider with question order. I hope that was helpful. I hope we see you again on Fun With Research. Thanks for joining me.